Hello guys, welcome to my channel Praveen Darburi. So in this video, I wanted to discuss about my clinical experience and those who want to do clinical rotations in USA. So when I was starting, I had a lot of questions. So those who are about to start and if they are looking how to start this entire process and how much is it going to be or how to start everything, I'm trying to detail my journey so you can also, you know, go as me or you know try your own way but then it will be useful for you to you know have a direction so i'll try to give that in this video so coming to usc what is uh, usc is united states clinical experience so basically what people think of this is unless you are trying to pursue a career in usa that's when you need to do usc uh that's not entirely true if you just want to experience the clinical experience in USA and just want to know how their system works, you can go there for a month, work in a clinic and then come back. It's not like I would only go there only if I want to write steps and do residency there. It's not at all true. And the other question, do I need steps before I apply for rotations in USA? See, there are, there are some rotations which require step one or step two as a check mark or to do rotation in their hospital or in their university hospital, whilst there are many which doesn't need any step. So those who say steps are completely required to do USC in USA are not entirely true. How do I start this process? So how do you start this process is uh, basically you need to have an idea which branch are you going to do the clinical rotation for because some might be interested in medicine some might be interested in pediatry some might be interested in emergency medicine so now what i heard when i went there with the residents is that it's better to do one medicine rotation irrespective of which branch you are going to apply or which branch you are interested in so one medicine rotation is uh, you know good to have it on your resume if you are going to write for steps but if you just want to experience how the system in USA works you can just apply for whichever you know branch you are interested in supposedly you are interested in pediatrics you can just apply for pediatric clinical rotation in uh, wherever you want to so how do I search for these rotations now this way the biggest questions biggest question came to me as well because I didn't know much people who went through this journey or the ones who I know are not close friends of mine. They are like friends who are far. So, but then I used to contact them. I used to know how they applied so they could help me. They were helpful, but then I am someone who is not, you know, totally dependent on friends and also trying to disturb them every minute asking them because I feel like maybe I'm disturbing them or, you know, sometimes the answers might not be as you are expecting. So. So it's better you try to research on your own, but then I'm trying to help you here. Many guys think I can go on my own with, without an agent or without an agent website. That's possible. But then you need to know which state you are going to apply, which hospital is near to you or which hospital you are interested in. Now, nobody will help you finding these question answers to this question because this is dependent on you. If you have a relative in, let's say, California, San Francisco or somewhere near to San Francisco because don't think if hospital is in uh, San Francisco your relatives are telling they are in San Francisco that doesn't mean they are living there most of the Indian families live far away in communities but they tell the city name near to them so kindly check the location before you are planning to apply wherever you are trying to apply and uh, this is why uh, why is choosing the state and the hospital so no once you have an idea that you're going to do let's say maybe in uh, washington dc in virginia in some hospital it's basically just checked on uh, google go to their hospital website and try type observership in google or in, in uh, medical graduates foreign medical graduates international medical graduates observerships and then try to click on it you will definitely see an application if it doesn't have one then that means they don't have observership programs a lot of hospitals in usa does not have observership programs for international medical graduates or international medical students well that's how it works do i apply or which are the best before the competition for usc or the competition for usmle per se 
has been normal but now indians have been substantially increased and the knowledge for usa and the relatives going there they trying to explain how the system works here and the future here and then that's motivating the indian doctors to leave uh, to usa so many are leaving so now even if you choose a place where you want to be extra special there's definitely some indian or some foreigner who has done rotation there so it won't make you you extra special but then if you want to be extra special on your resume my suggestion is try from your third or fourth year or from second year of your university you try to apply as an elective to universities because most of the universities or clinic hospitals that you think which are big they take students who are still not graduated now what indians do is one year when they are doing internship they can give break one to two months or three months and travel to usa and do the internship that's the plan of many indian students so would i recommend it yes definitely but then if you can do it earlier it's much better than doing it your internship period because that time you can maybe prepare for step 3 or step 2 and the earlier you are the best you are the best position you are in so now if you are in second year third year of your medical school and then you have two months of leave and you want to apply for a rotation just go for it just um maybe some might say i still don't have an idea of branch which i want to go into just do two random branches because this will add into your resume and the sooner you apply the better the chance of getting into a reputed university or hospital where international medical graduates have done lesser so how does that benefit you i mean let's say there are 10 group of people and 10 group of people have done at the same place that that seems normal right i mean everybody does come from the same pool but someone has done somewhere and that some place doesn't take international medical graduates so easily but this guy was able to do there that kind of outshines the cv from all of these guys so that's why i'm telling try to apply earlier if you want to get into reputed university hospitals or reputed um uh, uh internship programs but some people might ask does electives observerships or internship or sub internships all of this uh, will be different or is it like something you know that i will get benefited from if i do elective or like we get benefited if i do observership my honest point is i'm talking in the i'm telling this because i spoke with residents who have mass with doing observerships a lot of them do observership because a lot of them want to do after the graduation not before the graduation and before the graduation to electives are very few financial so most of them opt for observership observership or sub internship or anything the clinicals you apply for every one meets at the same place the international medical graduates or students so it's basically the same thing but then electives end off can be a positive in your resume so that's why i try to be here now how much is the fee are there no free clinical rotations see a lot of videos i watched and i personally wanted to do free clinical rotations i mean who don't want to do it for free but then i'm giving an honest opinion there are very 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 few spots and this 90% of chance you might not get a free clinical rotation in usa so don't be waiting for it and wasting your time that you just want to do it for free just go get the opportunity you have and do it how, how much ever the fee is now there are a lot of agencies there's uh the smle sarv there is am rotations there is uh, amg helping hands and so on these guys are like we provide clinical rotations uh, pay our fee so what is my suggestion is try to choose your place you want to go first and try to choose hospital or uh, the letter head you are looking for and the type of rotation you are looking for coming to the type of rotations there's inpatient rotation and outpatient rotations from the things i have heard, heard from residents inpatient rotations having two on your resume does help in getting you matched is what i have heard but then outpatient is also mandatory that you have one outpatient because they would see that you did an outpatient rotation and you are fond of taking with patients and handling an outpatient clinic too so 
does add as a positive but then inpatient does add more to your cv than an outpatient one so the more inpatient rotations the better your cv and the better chance of you get match now coming to the pricing rotations can vary can vary from as low as $400 to as high as $4000 now how do i choose one now how do i know if this is perfect now coming to the choices always university letterhead comes to comes on the top of the list if you are going for rotation always choose an university let's say state universities are always the best i mean hands down if it's a uh, uh, university of uh, north carolina south carolina texas university i mean these universities have their own hospitals and you're able to do in one of them then that's something great because these are public universities and state universities and you are able to do in their hospitals is like very good and there's another group mount sinai and if you're able to get in that too is uh, very good and cleveland clinic if you're able to get in that too will be so great and then now if i'm unable to get into any of this and my only choice is to go through agents because that's what i did because i was too late and i had no before idea of what rotations are or how these things work so i was just uh searching to the place where i was going so the place i was going was um chicago that's where my relatives are so i was searching the rotations near to chicago and i went to the outpatient one because uh it had university letterhead so that kind of drew my attention to it and rush university is uh very uh rush university is very famous in uh, chicago with uh, other five uh, university hospitals in chicago so i was like interested in it and kind of opted for it so will your rush university letterhead or outpatient outshine everybody in you know with the applicants i wouldn't say yes because there are a lot of indian students i would say a lot of indian students because the foreigners i met were maybe one or two all the rest were indian so don't expect you'll be meeting foreigners or americans who are doing rotations and you'll be meeting them don't expect any of this it will be most of your indian friends and mostly from your state you'll be meeting them there so the other thing is don't think too much on what to choose just think of if you are trying to save accommodation let's say accommodation and food can be provided by your relatives or your friends and that place is somewhere near texas or that place is somewhere near uh, california or that place is somewhere near florida and that's where you have your relatives at please go for it don't think too much of where you are going and stuff because maybe in the olden days rotations used to matter more but now everybody is doing rotations everybody that is able to get visa that is able to apply to rotations is going and doing rotations so now the pds the program directors who review application for matching don't pay much attention to it because they have seen this hospital letterhead before they have seen this doctor writing letters before so it does count as a factor i won't say you know doing not doing rotation doesn't matter so it should just leave rotations no you should do rotations for the experience because that's what they'll be looking for but that doesn't mean because you did rotation they'll be like yeah this guy did it and i'm going to match him right into my program no it's not happening right now like that so don't focus on much about the rotation you are going to do just try to save money on accommodation which our place is best suitable for you just go there and do it because a lot of people are doing at a lot of places so you won't be out shining them unless you get selected into the big ones and big programs but that will be taking 6 months or 12 months from the year or from the date you apply to get selected so there are a lot of factors to determine to get selected to the big ones yeah as i said uh, the fees varies from 400 to 4000 dollars depending on the ones you selected my personal experience the ones i did where um i did with uh, dr coleman in chicago and he's affiliated with russian i, I worked in his outpatient clinic and please if you see uh, a rotation saying university uh, or rush university the agencies write this way that a rotation in rush university or rotation in some university don't think you'll be going to university because i had an idea that i'll be going to outpatient clinic because 
one of my friends said it in patient out patient different and these guys are just affiliated to that university don't expect that you be going with them so i'm just saying for you so you know in future that you won't be expecting much that you be going to the university hospitals unless it's in patient if it's in patient then they must take you so yeah mine was out patient but the doctor was affiliated with rashi university so i'll get the rashi university right ahead it was it cost me around i think 1500 dollars and then accommodation and food was saved because I had relatives who were very kind enough to accommodate me there and the rest i did one was in new york with a uh, doctor anthony du prasad he's an nephrologist in brooklyn hospital and uh, kingsbrook jewish hospital he also works there and uh, interfaith medical center he also works there so fortunate for me i was fortunate for me sometimes dr prasad used to take me to the rounds for his um, inpatient hospitals so i was able to meet some patients uh, let me be honest with you a lot of students might be thinking going in patient town should be meeting residents so with meeting residents within one interaction you will making them best friends and with that best friend networking you will be just the guy will be just recommending to you to the pd when you are applying for your match here please don't narrate these stories to yourself networking i feel is a bit overrated because when you have everything in your hand network just forms by itself if you have stellar score stellar cv and super research you don't need to force conversations to make them your friends so they'll just recommend to you because all of these things are easy to say because people were like why didn't you make residents your friends why didn't you talk with your residents how would you force a conversation just with one ideology that when you're going to apply for your match here that this guy is going to help i don't i didn't feel comfortable but if you are good at it i mean if you can go and within one interaction make everything possible then of course uh, opt for inpatient and because why i'm saying this because my third rotation was in uh, new jersey in saint mary general hospital it was good but it wasn't the best because i was expecting meeting with residents and uh, stuff but you won't be meeting residents and uh, stuff or anything like that you will just be doing your rounds with your doctor and then you discuss a case and that's all you're done so choose wisely and uh, as i said don't try to think you know the most expensive ones are the super ones or the cheaper ones are the dummy ones or something everything is same now because everybody is doing everywhere so just choose a location which comforts you and where you can get some relatives help so you can save money there so that's with um, how much is rotations another question is when do i start it depends you know some how high maturity mind they can plan their next 5 years now because i mean some second year medical students can be planning they want to go to usa do some residency in this branch and some others at second year might not even have idea of next day exam i mean it's normal so you can't blame anyone that if they are late or but my suggestion is to be like the second year guy who is planning if he's going to ss uh for the future because this guy can write step 1 within his second or third year and then step 2 by the time he's graduating after the graduation during internship here he can write his step 3 so once he's done out of the university he's applying the same match cycle and he's getting match because his year of graduation is so close he has done his clinicals he has done his research he has done all his steps and uh, you know he's not wasting any time and having gap years but then it doesn't mean uh, it's a mistake that we didn't know because i did the same mistake so don't let yourself down that after graduating you have one or two or three gap years that you've been preparing for steps trying to apply for clinicals trying to do some research to have some stellar cv it's all normal because i'm in the same process now and i'm doing this to you know help someone who is trying to think of having this year's ml journey or usa clinical journey and uh, trying to because a lot of friends of mine don't even know how to start where to start when to start and how to even apply visa what's ds160 and stuff i mean it's not bad because not everybody knows everything somebody should be telling them and because a lot of people you know 
would just get matched into residency, that's all they forget. Whoever are in the same path for them, the most important thing is they say is that they have faced all the hardships before getting there and everybody will come to the same path. They will face the same hardships as we did. Why should we bother about them? I mean, not only I'm not blaming them, but that's how the world works now. So we can't blame anyone for that. Yeah. So that's the question. So for when do we need to start? Now, how do I apply for visa? What visa do I need to apply? How many years am I going to get the visa? The visa you are going to apply is for B1, B2. It's a multi-purpose um, visa. It's B1, B2 visa is for business and tourism. Now you can ask me, what am I I'm going to do rotations, something like internship and I get a tourist visa? Doesn't that would be a problem? No, it is not. Because immigration law of USA said that who want to do, you know, learn a skill to USA can come on B1, B2 visa. And uh, those guys who are in university, who are still studying, have much higher chance of getting visa because they have a proof that they are going to, going back to their home country after the rotation, which is one month or two months duration. Mostly, you need to apply just for uh, one month duration, tell them that, this, this is the one month you're going to stay at this particular place and do with this particular doctor and this um, subject and so on. Now, visitor type uh, visa is required and how do you apply? If you don't know, there are many YouTube videos I would suggest you to watch. But for me, I didn't even watch YouTube videos. Just type uh, DS160 online filling first. Just the website will be showing itself. Go click it. Fill in all the details. The most important thing is fill your DS-160 correctly because DS-160 once submitted cannot be changed. Before, you could have changed the number of DS-160 in your profile in the visa application, but now they have removed the option. So please do observe, type everything, including the address where you're going to stay. I mean, the clinic address, the doctor you're going to rotate with, what are you doing now? If you are uh, someone who is having gap year and doing nothing, just write uh, you're doing something like, let's say you're doing some uh, job at some hospital or something, or you're working on a thesis, just type whatever you're doing. Uh, don't be like you're doing nothing because they should have something that, that should bring back to your home country and uh, try to show proper assets, maintain your bank balance for a few months and uh, you know, because graduated students face rejection sometimes. And the most important thing is all of this is secondary because the primary thing is on the day of interview, you going there with confidence, killing it um, with confidence. That's the most important thing. Just think like you're talking to your friend and don't be thinking too much for the answer. Just give an honest answer for everything. And the most questions they can ask, like they did to me, are what's your purpose of the trip? Where are you going? And where have you studied? And uh, when are you going to come back? How long are you going to stay? Why USA? So have honest answers for them. And I don't think there will be a reason for rejection. As thus for the visa is concerned. Now, coming to expenses. Expenses of, uh, let's say, most of the Indians do three months USC or some do four months or some do two months or some do one month. Expenses can't be put in one tab because I can go there and see out the places and I mean, you can tell, I mean, going out and looking places won't be costly, right? It is costly. I mean, let's say you are in home in India, you go out, would it be costly? If you go out, you should definitely spend money on anything for food, for transport all basic things and for us if you do if you are not with relatives then you have to pay for accommodation for food and that's the first time you're going to you know the country which has been hyped so much so you definitely want to go look at the places so you definitely travel so the travel expenses would be there i would say also try to explore because you don't know life when it uh, gives you opportunities just try to do as much as you can with them and that doesn't mean you just go to travel but you also do the rotation, but then when you have free time, you should just go explore. That's my personal suggestion. Although it would be a bit expensive, maybe you won't have time again 
to travel because once you get into residency you know, or whether in India or in USA you would be having a family by then and then traveling would be just on weekends or one month or two months summer and uh, but that time you'll be having different people which this time you are alone and then you can just chill uh, that's uh, one personal suggestion Another question people ask is, can I prepare for steps while I'm doing my rotations? See, this question, in my personal opinion, it's not possible to prepare for steps during rotations. I mean, I wouldn't say it's not possible at all. If you're a smart guy, if you can maintain the environment, um, however the environment is, you can just study and do some new world questions and keep on doing questions or read books while uh, you know the commute or while transport or in home when you are back after the clinic and you can just open book and study then absolutely you can and you can also write there if you can prepare but most of the times there are some things we think and some things that happen in reality i'm talking about reality it's very very hard to prefer, prepare for steps during rotation so don't go with that idea so either try to finish your step one or step two here and go there or don't do any steps just go there do rotations come back if you like the way your system is working and if you have idea yes this is your journey ahead just you can start preparing now you see those who compare age some get into residency by 24 some get in by 25 some get in by 23 some get in by 28 29 all these are just numbers because at the end of the day nothing matters nobody cares about nobody so don't think too much about the age and numbers and uh, years of gap. The only thing is keep doing something. Just don't make your CV bland or um, a gap being uh, doing nothing. Just work on something and keep it going. So yeah, I think I have covered most of the queries or questions or things that you will have in your mind while applying for rotations in USA. If you still have any doubts feel free to contact me or just type comment i would reply and i'll be very glad to help anyone that is in need thank you thank you for watching